Alrighty then, people. Sunday today. This is gonna be a short and sweet video, I think, anyway. Robot, I'm still not done with that thing. Time is not on my side these days, so I'm, I, am, I am using it. So I can tell you that. One thing that did get cut out of the last video is I'm using these uh, lasers here to uh, orient the well, to compensate for the orientation of the sheet. So if it's crooked while, it, while you pick it up, you, you gotta know that so that when you place it on the table, it's gonna be in the right spot. Uh, of course, these lasers uh, shouldn't be on these arms because depending on how much weight I put into these uh, on these arms, then it's gonna slightly tilt more forward. So those are gonna be on arms down here instead, but that's for later. And also, I'm gonna replace that laser with a ultrasound sensor just because of the reflectivity of the sheets, making it, you know, a little bit difficult to, to have a exact measurement to the distance of the top of the sheets. Details, details. Anyway, it's starting to be quite the clutter of the cables here. Of course, uh, I shouldn't use the same color for all of those, but all of those are just 24 volts logic signals going to the inputs outputs of the robot. And I'm using uh, Ethernet here to make sure the buttons uh, don't, you know, lose uh, connectivity. Oh, and by the way, just so you won't think that I'm some kind of robot savant here, I have made this uh, custom GPT. So if you can see it's ABB Robot Pro and there's a logo there. I didn't do anything of that. The AI came up with that. However, when I now talk to this AI, it's referencing the ABB manual for rapid programming and the general one too. So you could literally ask anything and it will only reply with information that's coming from the manual, which is really good because when you ask it programming questions, it really wants to answer as if you're doing Python or some C sharp or whatever, not rapid programming. But now that works just great. So I can ask it pretty much anything. And another, by the way, moment when I'm not here and I want the machine, the router to order the sheets from the robot, I showed you before I put in these uh, G codes or programs to have the, the, uh, the pen come down and go and press uh, on whatever button for whatever sheet. So what I've done to simplify that is I just press control shift and F1 to F5 is the different sheets. So F1 is to unload, but two, three, four, five, that's for the thickness of the aluminum. So if we press F1, it's gonna do some blinking and stuff and that's gonna say unload table. So let's go do control shift and number two. Then you're gonna see load HDF and two millimeters aluminum. Cause you're always going to want to load the HDF, I figured since if I'm not here, then I'm not gonna be reusing the HDF. It's always gonna need a fresh one. Two problems. This is gonna be an update upgrade video like I've done before. So let's talk about improvements to the workflow while I have these worksheets. Let me show you one of those worksheets. I have prepared one for later that we're gonna talk about, but I can show you that now. It is that it's gonna say if it's going to need clinching nuts or press screws, for example. It's gonna say what kind and that's and how many of them. That's great. That is truly great. However, what the one last piece of the puzzle is on which side do you install them? That makes it so I still have to go back to the computer, look at the 3D model and see, okay, from which direction should I install these screws or nuts? That is one of the problems that I have solved and I'm gonna go show you the extension I made for Fusion that now handles that. Problem number two is if parts look like they are symmetrical, but they aren't, that makes it that it's up to me to notice while standing here in front of the, the vending machine so that I don't put it in like that when it should be in like that. And imagine there's a bunch of holes in a big sheet and one of those holes on one side has been moved five millimeters for whatever reason. That's really hard to detect if that piece is symmetrical or not. 
So what I had done to the, the automation workflow is that while it's running, it also checks for symmetry in X and Y of the, the, uh, the DXF that is used for cutting the part out. So if it is symmetrical in any direction, then it says so on the worksheet itself. That means I don't have to wonder about it. I don't have to go back to the computer and measure the, the, the distance of the holes to the edges and whatnot. So really nice. That was maybe the more simpler problem to solve. The, the clinching nut from what direction thing was not as easy and I've used chat GPT to I would say to the extent that it's well I've maxed out its in intelligence I mean it's really 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 smart and clever up to a point and then it gets super stupid so I've used it as far as I can I, I could not have done this in this time without it so props to that anyway this is meant for big assemblies but I'm gonna demo this thing using only this simple piece so just imagine this there's like a hundred components instead of just one I'm gonna run the script, uh, a part of the script, manually like this. When I run this uh, extension or script, if you will, you're gonna see this. So it finds all the uh, clinching nuts and screws and everything in the assembly. And it looks to see where are they in 3D space. And then it does the same for circles in components. So that is a circle for example and when it finds a circle it sees does that circle have a matching brother if you will on that is only separated in one degree of uh, freedom from this circle meaning on the other side of a sheet component for example if yes then pair those two together and then find which one of those two is closest to the clinching nut that's going to be the one behind here. That way we know, okay, this is the hole that we're going to be installing the, the clinching nut into. So how do we differentiate that hole in any way, in some way? So when I just ran that script you saw, I'm going to select that and hide this. You can't quite tell, but I put a double 0.1 millimeter uh, chamfer on it. You can't really see it, it's not gonna get cut, it, you know, it's, it's just there as a placeholder to identify this hole so that when the automation runs, it knows that, okay, we have a hole here and there's gonna be a clinching nut installed and it's gonna be from this direction. So, the other part of the extension, if I go into automate there, there's UTAB export. What it also does is well, I need to first select the, the component of interest, go to automate and UTAP expert. It's gonna say export complete and you see that it hides the, the component. What it does, it looks through the entire assembly. Okay, how many of this component is there in here? So that number can be added to the worksheet. So I know that without having to count them myself because it's really easy to, to miss one. And then it hides all of those so that in the end, when I'm done with this entire assembly there's not going to be anything left that way i know that i've handled all of them because i have forgotten or missed that there's a tiny bracket at the rear somewhere and that never gets made until in the end when we notice it's not there and yada yada really really sweet so there's a text file in the folder next to the 3d model that contains information about the clinching nuts, screws, what the type they are, how many they are, and how many of these components are in there, and yada, 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 yada. Okay, so next step. So, well, I could actually show you the automation. That's, it's been a while. So let's go here. I'm going to 3D import. I have to film the, the, the <coughs> keyboard there so I don't have to blur anything. So here we go. This is our super simple piece. It doesn't really matter which side I select to be up in the router since it doesn't have any countersinks. So let's just go with this side and then you can see that this pops up and I replaced the Swedish for English so you can see what's going on. The amount here is just one. You can change this manually. If you change it, it's gonna prioritize your change other, rather than the one that it added itself by counting. 
it's a tick box for ben generating a bending program printing a worksheet and a label a label is just what i put on the finished product so that the customers can scan it and you know whoever needs the information will get it there's a option here for paints that's just because if there aren't any pdfs with information about that you might want to add it manually just so you don't forget about it and i'm gonna press ok i'm gonna zoom out a bit so i don't have to blur stuff but right now it's running the automation it's doing calculations for how much material you will need and all of that good stuff that i've talked about so many times before overriding the old file yada 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 and you're gonna see that it's gonna start printing a worksheet there it's just gonna be this exact same one and while that is printing and making the bending program because we could take that paper right now go to the Kimla we're gonna scan it blip and you can see it's imported it and it said generating uh, tool pass so the tool pass are there but instead of running that I have prepared a piece so this video doesn't get too long and if you can't tell focus you fuck uh let's see here can you see those two rings on the inside of the hole so there they are that means okay i need to install the clinching nut from this side how hard is that that's super easy to see well actually it is even though the video might not show it i also added this thing import import one more question mark it's gonna time out in 15 seconds if i press yes it's just gonna bring up the dialog box to select your next com next component i just check my part and i can see those two rings that way i know from which direction to install them that is actually a really big deal for me because when you're up and about and you're, you're steaming along you, you, it's such an interruption to need to go back to the computer look up okay where is this 3d model who, who ordered it so i can find it open up the 3d model look at the component oh check oh it's from this side run back to over there where i installed them and realize fuck i forgot again so back again and there i go running back and forth so yeah th those are my two problems that i have so here, here's another good example uh, there's two rings in there in that wall there's no one there there are none in that hole that means there's no clinching nut in there but there's supposed to be one there and one there super sweet oh that was uh, intense happy what is it, monday bye bye <laughs>
Sunday evening. Sleep tight tonight. Well, after you finish, that is. Bye.